So well, um, as Mark said, uh, I'm Francisco. I'm uh, presenting here the work of uh, ID La Rioja. Uh, this is an, an organization, a regional government organization in Spain, in northern Spain. Uh, and they've been doing many amazing things the last years. And the last thing they did, uh, the last thing they brought to the to the to the FMA World Tour, and we brought them for them to the to the FMA is uh, their work on creation of uh, vector tiles for the background maps. So, uh, well, uh, as Mark said, uh, I work for Contera, which are a safe software partner in Spain. I work mostly with yeah with Spanish customers. And, and the work I'm presenting is not mine, it's uh, La Rioja's work. So, um, they, did, they couldn't make it here. I'm sorry, I, I really, I would prefer being in that side, looking at them here, but well, I have to be <laughs> here. <laughs> um, so uh, these are uh, Pablo and Anna. Well, Anna is the one on the left. Pablo is the one on the right. This is like uh, <laughs> this is two guys, I think. Um, um, IDE La Rioja. IDE means uh, SDI in Spanish, so they are like the responsible for the regional SDI of La Rioja. I don't know if you are into wine. You probably know more or less La Rioja. Sounds familiar. It's a, a quite small region in northern Spain. The, they're yeah, mostly well known for uh, wine producing, and and they're really really innovative in, in their SDI department. Um, if you want, um, you can mention them on Twitter. They're gonna be glad to hear that they're gonna they're somehow present here, and in the, the FMEC, uh, the Twitter account is ID Rioja, and. If we want, to, we can do another thing. So this session is being recorded. Re they're gonna, like right now in Spain, is mm, past 20, it's, they're probably not working, but they're gonna see the recording, I don't know, probably when, whenever, they, whenever they, they, they post it online. So if you don't mind, let's go and, go and, and have a look at the camera and say hello to them. Uh, in Spanish, you say hello, hola, so let's gonna, all face to the camera in the back and say, hola Pablo, hola Ana, hola Pablo, hola Ana. So, um, so uh, as I was saying, they've been doing really amazing work uh, last year. They've been present in, uh, presenting in any event we've been organizing in Spain, any World Tour event uh, since the World Tour started. Uh, they've been like uh, first year. They they they've been presenting um, what they have done. They had automated their their um, ortho photos generation in in geo PDFs with, uh, using FME. Uh, like they they have like their um, geo portal with a, where you can download these PDFs and they are automatically generated with with FME. Um, then 2013, uh, they had done, it was like quite, quite recent that uh, the rapid eye imagery was, uh, was available. So they had, work, they had done some work on this for generating vegetation indices. Vegetation indices is quite important for, for this region because of the, the, the importance uh, winery has in it. So uh, they had done some work to, to with, with me as well for generating these vegetation indices. And that work uh, had been shown in the, not only in the FMA World Tour in Spain, but also in the FMA World Tour around the world. There was like a selection of studies that you could, uh, that, that, that SAFE was bringing around the world. And this one was chosen among them. And there's also an article in the SAFE blog talking about this. Um, they've also done the year after they were showing uh, how they're using Git as a, as a, basically as an open data portal for them. So they are uploading automatically the, the um, 
um, their data from the database in GeoJSON in Git, and they are using Git as a repository, as an open data repository. That was presented to by, by Ken Bragg, last FMEC here. They also worked in tile generations for, for their uh, tile servers. They've also worked in, in, in Victor data styles. Um, and this year, they were, they, they were showing us they work on creating vector tiles, and that's what we're going to talk about. So what are vector tiles? I guess you all know tiles, right? You know, um, like what are tiles? Where is a um, uh, tile server where I have my tiles, and I can like I have different uh, images for different uh, zoom levels, covering more or less area. Um, so I don't have to uh, load the whole area, uh, area that is not of my interest. So um, traditionally. Uh, Tile servers have been using uh, raster tiles. Raster tile was just like a, a bunch of, of pre-generated raster images, a collection of pre-generated um, images stored somehow in a in a um, in a server, and the server was just serving these images. It, that meant uh, if you had any kind of updates in your original data in your base data you had to regenerate the whole collection of images or you had to um, um, yeah, to do it somehow. Uh, that meant also a lot of storing space in the, in the, in the server and resources in the end. Uh, vector tiles, on the other hand, are not uh, just static PNG, uh, raster files that you have in your server, but are like uh, raster files generated on the fly. So uh, you don't have the, the, the raster files in your server. The, you have, in this case, GeoJSON files. And on the fly, on demand of the, when your, your, what you serve is also the rasters, but you are, re, you are generating these rasters um, on demand um, using styles too. So you can have many different styles. Uh, you have, can have many different symbologies for, all, for any uh, data collection you have, and um, what you win is like, well, you, you don't need as much less uh, storage space, and you don't have to update the whole collection anytime because you are always accessing to the source data. Uh, so I was saying they use GeoJSON for this. They use GeoJSON as, a, as their uh, vector tile format. Why was that? Why, why did they use GeoJSON? Well, Vector tiles is not something they invented. They, it's something it's a technology already exists, and there's only uh, there's many other um, I say uh, commercial solutions or not commercial solutions solutions uh, that are also um, available for 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 generating tile vector tiles. For example, they consider using a uh, protobuf. That's the the specification of Mapbox. Well, it's actually. Uh, Google specification, my books is using. Um, they considered in using this just because uh, it was is quite um, widespread and it works quite well. Uh, you get your data really well compressed here. Uh, but they thought, well, the uh, problem is this is only going to be compatible with Mapbox. Um, and not only that, but like the way they they compress the image the 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 information, the it's also the the client who has to do the the work of uh, uncompressing this data. So they thought of doing something else, uh, and uh, the same way they had worked before for raster tiles. They thought, well, we can do the same yes using instead of PNGs, GeoJSON. So um, they just created the vector tiles in GeoJSON format stored in SQLite database and then did the uh, rendering. rendering. Um, so GeoJSON is an open standard, it's a, a, a well-known standard. It, it, it's available in any, um, uh, in any desktop GIS or any, well, it's available in FME, that's also quite helpful. 
Um, it has the disadvantage that is uh, the, the storage space you need is higher than than in PBF because obviously PBF is really well compressed. So well done. Um, so they decided doing this, uh, storing their vector tiles in GeoJSON and then rendering through Mapnik. Um, so they just what they basically did is, did is just uh, getting their source data. They have like their their data in in, um, in an Oracle Spatial Database. They just tiled it in the different levels. They did also uh, some generalization depending on the level, what layers they wanted, what information they wanted, was this the, the density of information. So they did the, some work. And then they generated that information in, in, in GeoJSON. And they stored these GeoJSON uh, GeoJSON GeoJSON files in the SQL8 database. Uh, this idea of doing this in a in a in a in a school a database is also um, the the way you store raster tiles in in MB tiles format. So they didn't reinvent the wheel. They just like used another another um, another way of doing it. So they did that. Like they had like uh, two different uh, sources. Uh, OpenStreetMap and their own databases. And they did the data extraction, the digitalization, and, and, um, and formatting in, in GeoJSON with FME, and um, created uh, this SQLite database uh, with, uh, there's actually just two tables they needed, like the map table and the images tables where the vector tiles go the vector tiles in this case was just like the GeoJSON. And okay, well, they, they have their vector tiles, but you cannot serve these vector tiles directly. You have to render, ren render in them, render them. Um, so how did they do that? Uh, they did that using Mapnik. So they had like the different uh, source data, like could either be like uh, their vector data or other sources they already had. And uh, using Mapnik, uh, you could use the symbology stored in an XML file and uh, render that to the server. The, 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 the formats, the output were either PNG or JPG depending on, on the information they had in origin. For some kind of data, it was uh, better to use one, of the, one or the other. And the source data, it wasn't only the vector types they had already created, but it could also combine them with other data sources they had. For example, they could combine them with the, with the elevation models they had already created, or they could combine them with the uh, orthophotos they had already created. So they did kind of a um, quite flexible um, uh, source data combination. They could do, for, for example, composition between vector and raster tiles they had already created putting them together. Um, so where were their data sources? I was telling you, like uh, they had their, their, um, their data they, they take care of in an Oracle Spatial Database, that's like the right part of the graphic. Um, they were also using, well, obviously this data is only for La Rioja, for, the, for their area. Oh, well, they also have uh, data for the rest of Spain, but they don't, they don't collect this data, is the National Mapping Agency doing that. And for the rest of the world, because they wanted to have something for the rest of the world, they were using, um, uh, for, the, for the levels seven on top, uh, open street maps, and for the levels uh, zero to seven, uh, this uh, uh, data set, this open data set from natural earth. So, um, they were putting all these data sources in their uh, GeoJSONs in, and then with Mapnik and their XML library, the XML uh, symbologies they had, they had, they were rendering them. Um, so, in the end, what they had, they had different data depending on where you were. Like if you were in, in La Rioja, that's this, this um, small uh, squares there, as you can see. Uh, they had their own data. If they were maybe in the rest of Spain, you had they had like all their data. You were in the rest of the world, they had all their data. Um, and yeah, and that's it. 
Mm. So well, I'm gonna show you here how it looks uh, on a server. I know this, uh, uh, this keyboard. Um, so that's a test server they have. They have here like uh, all their different layers they have created, not only this one. Um, and so you have here for any zoom level, you can see how the data is being rendered here on the fly, like this, these um, tiles are being here uploaded. They are not storing these tiles as a PNG format or so. There's, they're storing these tiles in the vector format. And the rendering is, the, is, is done on the fly. So as you get closer, you can see, like obviously the, the, um, the information you have changing, changes. They had also done for the world to like the uh, another like just for fun uh, symbologies like like they'd be like using the symbology of Narnia. Uh, that's the nice thing about this that they didn't they didn't have to have a they didn't have a data set for Narnia tile maps. They have only an XML file that has the symbology. So. This date, this uh, symbology are just rendered, just being rendered right now. There's nothing. There's not. There's no. Um, they could add as many symbologies as they as they want to. Like they have here, a couple of, just for a uh, plane. And, and well, and well, those here on top are their PNGs. They're they're um, old. Uh, raster, raster tiles. So you can see here, La Rioja is this region here, more or less. So well. Um, so what did they get with it? What did they got with this? Um, they got that they could uh, create these background maps uh, with very good performance. They found out. Um, they could update their data anytime they wanted without updating the we have uh, having to update the, the, the rest of tiles as they were doing before. Um, they, they, they got that they can use any symbologies they want. They can just anytime change the symbology or create a new symbology. Um, it doesn't matter the symbology you're using because the symbology you're, is, you're uh, applying it on the fly. So um, it doesn't affect the, 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 the source data. And, and well, and they found that the performance was quite good. So, um, so yeah, uh, I think that's it. Um, I'm leaving you here also their uh, email directions if you want to get in touch with them. I think they'll be glad. They're, all, they're really nice people, always, help, always happy to help. So feel free to to get in touch with them. And if you have any questions, Yes. Hi. Um, my question for the rest of the uh, the tutorial. Uh, what do you think um, what kind of ideas like uh, how do you uh, how do they um, share uh, how the RAM is being used up? Like so how do you set the bounding box to calculate the expansion rate? Like is there a limit on that? Like that's what I, I integrated with Vector Power when I did um, Microsoft Edge. Mm -hmm. uh, Um, so yeah. Do they have Adobe Tech? Is that the, is that your plug? Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> 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 Trying to think. 
no, it seems that they had already done that before, you know, because uh, the the data they were using, they had already used that for doing the raster tiles. So, oh, okay. so they had done that like actually three years ago. Um, so I'm trying to find. Yeah. So that's actually running in SME in the background? No, no, actually. Oh, uh, okay. th there's no, like, I mean, like, the, the, ren the FME is not doing the rendering here. Okay. The FME is doing, like, the generation of the, of the GeoJSON files. Okay. The GeoJSON files are being rendered here using MapNIC. Okay. But is, is, that, is that still doing it live? Why yeah, yeah. Is it calling FME live to do a GeoJSON? No, no, no. Okay, no. So no, there's no FME server, whatever now. Moving a lot. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to change this. Okay, well, sorry, uh, I didn't pay attention. Was No, well, they, they, they customized a lot the, the, the standard map now library to do this. Like they had to do that, actually a lot of work in that. It wasn't just like getting the, the standard uh, MapNIC library and say like, oh, well, let's do it like that. No, no. And and yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, I think they're planning on uh, publishing some of the work they've done in those uh, libraries after in, the, in, in their GitHub. But I don't know how far how how far are they gonna publish everything or not, because like the all the um, customizations you do, they're not really useful to share in the GitHub. Oh well, it's something they they still have they still haven't done. So. So um, the coordinate systems are being changed. Um, are being changed uh, on the fly here. Like, as um, they have the the, the geojsons are in spherical macata, I think, and the and whatever the the is the is the um, uh, the on the fly part that does the that does the the coordinate system reprojection here too. So, any coordinate system you could. One, you could change it here. In this case, they're not doing it, but you could do that. So, like, I mean, like, they have different data in different in different uh, coordinate systems, and like, in, even when their vector data is always in the same coordinate system, like the orthophotos or the other data sources they could use from from any other organization, they're gonna have it in, in another coordinate system. So it has to be in this step and not before that they do the coordinate system homogenization. Are they? Yeah. Well, not wanted, but they are. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, well, thank you very much for this talk. I think you're a great talk. And they do do some fantastic work. They do. Uh, well, thank let's you. say thank you. thank you to Anna and Pablo for the work.